It's good to be back. This week's Chainsaw Man really got my heart racing in one of the funnest and well-earned moments of affection Dingy has ever gotten from Asa. But also, it's just great to be talking about Chainsaw Man again. Fits like a glove. So let's go ahead and let's get into the chapter. As the Falling Devil is skewered by this mysterious new Chainsaw Man, by the way, I did a video on the fake Chainsaw Man theory, so check that out in the cards, okie dokie. Asa slowly comes to and realizes what we have here. Two Chainsaw Mans? We don't really see him for the rest of this chapter, but uh, I'm actually really interested and intrigued to see where this two Chainsaw Man theory is going. If Asa is going to ask Dingy about that, if we're ever going to see him again, I imagine we are. And if we are, are we going to have to be waiting for another set of chapters to see him again? Or is he going to continue to be in this arc? We'll have to see. But then after that, in a really awesome looking transition, by the way, they're suddenly thrust out of the darkness by some worm-like tentacle monster and sends the two flying. Asa lands opposite of Dingy, comes to, and seeing that Chainsaw Man is basically shooting blood out of his stomach like a geyser, honestly, I was kind of thirsty anyways, uh, proceeds to go and actually help Chainsaw Man. However, Yoru, being the oh-so-mature and adult figure in Asa's life, immediately tells her this is her chance to finish Chainsaw Man while he's down. But Asa clearly doesn't operate by Yoru's rules, she operates by Dragon Ball Z rules. So in this chapter, she flips him a sensu bean and proceeds to give Vegeta it. Of course, I'm just kidding. Yoru actually offers her body back to Asa if she kills him right then and there, and we see... Surprisingly, that's not such an easy decision for Asa to come to. Now, as an audience, we kind of know this is the case that she wouldn't do this to Chainsaw Man or Dingy, but these two are eventually, from an audience perspective, we know they're going to go to Pound Town. It's just not going to happen. But in the actual world itself, for Yoru, she is always perplexed why she does the opposite of what she says. And to me, this is just another example of how Asa is very much divided internally. In her mind, she wants to be accepted and with people and all that stuff, but her reaction suggests she hates people and that she hates Chainsaw Man and Dingy, but that may not actually be the case, at least not entirely. So in a twist, I actually genuinely never thought was ever going to happen in a series like this. Asa takes out an object to just cut her palm with and feeds her delicious viscous liquid to help heal Dingy. The reason she's doing this is because Chainsaw Man has saved her life twice now. And for that reason, Dragon Ball Z logic suggests the next best thing from a sensu bean, delicious viscous, so she gives him that. Also, Asa brings up a really awesome point, and it's a great moment for her personally. If someone like Chainsaw Man to her is trash, then maybe for her, there is a place in this world for her. After all, Denji smells like dogs, and I'm sure Asa smells like roses. Well, well, you know, probably sweat right now, but usually probably roses. Actually, all right, fan theory time. What do you guys think actually Asa smells like normally? And I totally didn't ask that to get comment engagement up. I'm actually just deranged. So finally, in a moment that I never see, and also one that sort of strikes the cockles of my heart, Asa cries out, save me, chainsaw man. That's my best Asa impression, by the way. It's pretty bad, I know. Digi then jumps to his feet, grabs Asa, and puts her in his arms, and they flee away from the tentacle demon thingy. So while this happens, Chainsaw Man basically tells Asa that even now he may not be able to save her as he's slowly getting tired. So because this is written by Fujimoto, <laughs> Asa spots a motorcycle and tells Dingy basically to commit Grand Theft Auto 5 and steal the bike. But being the man of culture that Dingy is, he can't steal it because, of course, a woman is riding it. And at this moment, I realized Dingy absolutely simps for the female characters in Bethesda games. So Asa then spots a dude on a bike, and so they kick that poor man off his bike, and, the, and then Dingy proceeds to throw Asa under the bus, blame it all on her. Though to be fair, he would have a point, but he doesn't. You know, the whole female thing? But anyways, Dingy, not knowing how to ride, asks Asa how to, which she then uses her power to, I assume, is going to transform the bike into something in the next chapter that Dingy could make drive, maybe, or like be a part of, maybe Asa's gonna ride Dingy. Hey, we can make jokes about that. But the chapter then ends with the dude yelling, that's my bike. And a lot of people don't know this, but they actually cut the second part of that line in which he said, that's my bike. Subscribe to Bento and drop a like on this video. Honestly, I thought that was a really well-written line, but Obviously, poor dude with his bike. Let's be real. That was totally on point for Denji to steal that dude's bike instead of the lady on her bike. It was really funny. And really, you know, 
Maybe Asa just should have known better. Uh, but the best part of this chapter, in my opinion, was Asa choosing to save Chainsaw Man. Even though Asa spoke no respect for him at all, the words he spoke to Asa did have some effect on her. Probably not the kind of effect he was looking for, but it actually still got the job done. And because of Chainsaw Man's poor example, it breathed new life and purpose into our heroine. But that's the thing. Fujimoto does things his own unique way. And I think the way he wrote this whole scenario was highly entertaining and just really fun. I really want to see these two dorks interact in the future. I want to see Denji tell Asa about his true identity as Chainsaw Man, and God damn it, I want Powie back too. So let me know what you guys thought about this chapter down in the comments below. It was a pretty quick one, was it not, fellas? So as well, check out my video on the fake Chainsaw Man theory I did. I'd appreciate it as I'd like some sort of feedback on that video. So thanks for watching, everybody. We'll see you uh, in the next Chainsaw Man video. Bye-bye.